Hello everyone, welcome to screencast number 14. This is Upamanyu. Today we'll be taking on a hands-on project. We'll be building a simple tag cloud using JavaScript. Now, in a previous video, we had taken on building a tag cloud using pure CSS. In this video, we'll focus slightly on making the tags animate. It'll give a nice and dynamic look and feel to the tags. Let's have a look at what we are going to achieve today in this screencast. Now this is a simple yet very compact and minimal tag cloud. These tags might seem like static ones but they are animated. When I hover over a tag, it shows me a number. This number is completely customizable and can depict the popularity of the tag. Now once we have in mind what we are going to build, let's get on to coding this thing. Now I'll quickly head inside my terminal and create the necessary files. The first file I'll create is the index.html. The second one will be the style.css. And finally, we'll create the functions.js. Now, once we have created these files, we'll check out the directory structure. Everything looks fine. Let's enter our editor. I'll start with a basic HTML5 mockup. And as you've guessed, title will be animated tag cloud. Next, we would have to link some CSS files up. First CSS file we'll need is the reset.css by Eric Meyer and I can grab a copy of the file from there. So I'll save it in my animated tag cloud folder. And now I can link the downloaded file as such. Another file I want to link is our own style.css. Once the linking part is done, we'll head inside the body. Now the body will have the first div with the class of push. Now next we'll have a complete wrapper. We'll have a div with a class of panel so it'll hold all the tags that we see in our document. Inside this we'll have an unordered list inside which we'll have a list item. Inside the list item we'll have an anchor tag with the class of tag. So this is the basic tag we're beginning with. Inside this tag we'll have again two classes tag name and another the tag count. So these were the two things we had seen in the demo. Likewise we'll create a span with class of tag name and another span with the class of tag count. So that's done. Let's just organize the code a little bit. So we are done with the basic structure of our document. Now the first tag will be named design and it'll have a count of 24. Now once we are done with this, let's have a look in our browser how this file looks. Before we run the file directly, let's have a look at the demo web application. Now you can see the URL. It's a clean and complete URL. It's a hosted server. Now you can do that by installing a very simple node extension called HTTP server. Well, you can obviously run this file directly, but that will give you a very unclean URL. So let's install the HTTP server node package. And we want to install this globally. Once it's installed, I can run the command HTTP server to build a new server inside the current directory and it is being displayed on the port 8080. So I'll shift back in my browser and refresh this page. You can see our code. Well, we have not done styling yet. Okay, so I'll just pause the video and add all the other tags that you could see in the demo and I'll be back. Now, as you can see, I have copied all the tags inside my document. And let's have a final look in our browser. Now let's get on to styling these things to a decent looking tag cloud. But before that, we need to download two image assets. Now these image assets are available on my cloud app and I'll provide the link in the description. The first one is the tag.png. It's a sprite sheet which will help us build the tag. So the tags are not pure CSS. I'll save the tag.png inside my animated tag cloud folder. And the second one is the bg.jpg which is the background image. Again, I'll save it inside my animated tag cloud folder and we are done. So in a new tab, I'll open my style.css. So first I'll start with the HTML and body. So first the height, 100% height, and next we'll style the body. So there will be a font Now once we have done the styling for our body, let's head on to the layouting. Now if you remember, we had created a div with the class push in our document. So that is the first thing we are going to style. So first, we'll float it to the left. 
Next, we'll set the height to 50%. The margin in the bottom would be minus 200 pixels. The position would be relative and the width would be 100%. So with that, we have worked with our layout. So let's just quickly save this document and let's have a look at our browser. So if I refresh this, this looks better. That's a nice start, but let's get ahead and style the content. So first, I'll style the panel. We'll put the background as the bg.jpg that we have downloaded. And it will be set to no repeat. The X and Y coordinates would be 0 and 0. The next thing will clear the left. The height will set it to 268 pixels. That is the height of our image. Margin of 0 pixels in the top and bottom and auto in the left and right. Next we'll have a padding of 132 pixels in the top. 250 pixels in the right, 0 to the bottom and 270 pixels to the left. Next we'll set the position to relative and the width to 270 pixels. So this width acts as a boundary so that each and every tag is confined within this width. Let's save this document and have a quick look at our browser. As you can see it has become centered. Although you can't understand the width property as of yet once we begin styling the tag separately we'll get to understand it quickly now we'll go ahead and start styling the individual tags we'll target the tag class and the first property we'll add is the background property we'll link it to the url of tag.png we'll set it to no repeat and the x and y origins to 0 and 0 next we'll set the text color to 3f 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 the display would be blank for now, but ultimately we have to set it to none. We'll float it to the left. The height will be set to 25 pixels and the line height would be set to 1. Next we'll add a margin of 5 pixel and a padding of 0, 5, 0, 8. The position will be set to relative and the text decoration would be set to none. We have not added the terminating colon in the float property. If you once again save the document and refresh it, you can see the tags are arranged in groups of three or two as per the width of the tags. Now, once we have done this tag styling, we'll add the hover selector. So when I use a hovers over tag, cursor will change to pointer. Also, if the user is active over a tag, we want a slight change in the position of the tag, which will give it a button effect. And we can achieve it by adding a top property of one pixel. What this will do is change the edge one pixel above the current edge, which will basically shift the whole tag down by one pixel. We'll shift into our browser and refresh this page. And you can see when I click, it gives me a buttoned effect. So we have finished with that. Let's go ahead and style the spans. So we'll target the span tags inside the tag class. The display should be block and it should flow to the left. So once we have done that, we'll get ahead to style the tag name and tag count separately. First, we'll start with the tag name. Again, the first property we'll add is the background. But this time, the X and Y origins would be 100% and negative 25 pixels. We'll add a height of 19 pixel. We'll add padding. Position will be set to relative. And we'll have a text shadow. The horizontal shadow will be zero, that is none. There will be a vertical shadow of one pixels, a blur of one pixels, and the shadow will be white. Next, we'll set the Z index to 10. And that's because we want our tag name to appear above our tag count. Next, we'll style the tag count. Again, the first property will be background. And again, the X and Y origins would be 100% and this time it would be negative 50 pixel. The color would be white yet again and the height would be 19 pixel. There will be a padding. We'll add no pixel to the right and there will also be a text shadow similar to the tag name text shadow and a dark red color. Also it will have the top edge shifted by one pixel just as such it looks beneath the tag name and the Z index We'll set it to 5. You can set it to any value lower than the Z index of tag name. With that, we complete our styling. Let's have a final look in our browser. Now, if I refresh this, you can see it looks as expected. 
but still there is no animation inside it. We'll add that animation using JavaScript. Now with styling out of our way, we'll start with our functions.js. Now before beginning with the functions.js, we need to download and link three important JavaScript files in our index.html. So let's begin by downloading those files. Now if I head on to cdnjs.com, a collection of latest JavaScript libraries and search for jQuery, I'll be provided with a link to download it. So I'll copy the HTTP URL and if I paste it in a new tab, I'll get the complete file. So I'll save it in my animated tag cloud folder. The next file we need is the jQuery easing library to emulate the animations. We'll go into our HTML file. Now we'll add these scripts just after the panel div ends. So I'll set the script source to jQuery.main.js. Next, we'll link up the easing library. The last script we need to link is our own functions.js. Now with that done, I'll save the file and head on to our functions.js in a new tab. Now in the functions.js, we'll start by the window load functions. Now this is similar to the onload handler we get in JavaScript. So when the tab is loaded or the window is loaded for the first time, so first we'll target the tag class and for each of the tag class we'll run a loop basically and since we're running a loop we need a variable for the loop. So for each of the tag we'll set a timeout first with the set timeout function. So we'll say that for each tag class an equivalent of tag class like 1, 2, 3, 4 will apply following CSS style. We'll set the display to block and we'll set the opacity to zero. Now why we are doing this, we want tags to appear one by one on the screen and it'll have a sort of fade in effect. Now once we set the opacity to zero, we'll stop all the animations. We'll say animate. We'll set the opacity to one simply. Now the most important thing we need next is the type of animation we'll have. And this is where our jQuery easing comes in. We'll add the type of animation to ease in out expo and to understand what this ease in out expo is we'll have to head on to the easings page of the jquery api now here in this page we'll be given all sorts of easing animations along with the curves if we quickly find the ease in out expo its curve looks like a s that means it starts slowly suddenly accelerates and again continues on a slow motion so if i click this black box it shows me the animation and this is exactly the effect we're trying to achieve. We'll head back into our JavaScript file. And next, there'll be a time 250 multiplied by i plus 1. So that means first, it'll appear in 2 seconds. Second, it'll appear in 3 seconds. So on and so forth. So with that, we complete the loading animation basically. And if we complete our window.load function and save this file, and have a look at our browser, you can see each tag appears one by one as we have expected it to appear. And the final thing we want to do is the tag count should come out of the tag name once we hover over a tag. So to achieve that effect, we'll have another function. This time too, we'll target the tag class and we'll have the hover function. Now for this element, we'll stop all animations. And then again, we'll start animating and we'll add a padding right tag count subtracting 5 pixels from the total width of the tag count and tag name and this time too we'll have the ease in out exponential animation so once we are done with that we'll have another function and this time we'll say this element again stop all the animations and start animating again set the padding right to 5 this time again we'll have the ease in out exponential animation so with that we complete this function as well and we'll end the hover function and i see i've made a spelling mistake i'll change it and lastly we need to add that the click function will be disabled in each of the tags so with that we function our javascript file as well if we head on to our browser and refresh the page you can see the changes have not taken effect let's review our code once more so on inspecting the code a little bit, I found out that it has been a problem with the naming all along and nothing is wrong with our code. So it seems that we had been editing functions.js instead of functions.js all this time, while our 
index.html still points to functions.js so the simple solution is just changing the name source of our script so I'll just go inside the index.html and I'll change the functions.js to functions.js so this should solve all of our problems I'll just save it and have a look in our browser so now you can see the tags are displaying properly there's this expanding effect that's going on but it's not going on the proper region that we expect it to happen and still the tag count is not going beneath the tag name now first of all the push class we had mentioned position instead of position so we have to correct that and next in the tag count we didn't set a position and the tag count is setting its position fixed based on the inherited values now we need to set the position to absolute so with that I think this will be the end of our corrections and if I refresh this page this is all we wanted this is the final result and the tag count comes out from beneath the tag name so that was all for this tutorial if you like my videos please subscribe to my channel this is Upamanyu signing off from screencast number 14 thank you